and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new set Ocean Shelfie because these cute little ocean critters are taking selfies with their cameras. We're also going to be taking a look at the new Ocean Wave stencils. So for the first card I'm going to create today, it is a card by Audrey and she used the new Ocean Wave stencils that you can see here to create her background. These work just like the hillside stencils and the grassy stencils with a stencil at the top for the wave and then you can shift it up and use it as a mask. There are three different waves in this set of stencils and they all have that grid etched on them as well as guidelines for an A2 size card front in both landscape and portrait. To start with though, I'm going to be creating the ground at the bottom of my ocean here and I'm going to use one of the hillside stencils for this. I have a piece of watercolor paper cut slightly larger than an A2 size card because we're going to be doing some die cutting. And I'm just using that stencil tape to the background and I'm adding some tea dye distress ink. And then I added some vintage photo right along the top to just darken up that edge. Now I'm going to add some specks of vintage photo oxide so they're going to be a little chalky looking. So I've just smushed that onto my craft mat here and I've added some water with a paintbrush and I'm just picking that up and flicking it onto the ground there. So I've left my stencil in place so that I don't get any of these flecks of brown paint on the part above where my ocean waves are going to be. Now I can take that same stencil which I cleaned off and I'm going to use it as a mask. So I'm just taping that in place and that's going to stay in place while I do all the waves on the background. So I'm taping the first wave here and I'm actually using the bottom side. So I'm kind of using more the mask and I'm going to be inking that part that's between the two stencils. I'm using a bunch of different distress ink colors here. I have cracked pistachio, peacock feathers, mermaid lagoon, and blueprint sketch and I'm just going to go back and forth between the colors and create a fun ocean background using these stencils. Watercolor paper will allow the ink to move around a little bit more than the normal white cardstock so it gives it a very fun and fluid look. I'm going to be using about two colors for each little section here. And then I'm not going to worry about masking the section below. So if it blurs that line a little bit because it's moving the ink around, I'm fine with that. And it gives it that kind of flowing look that water has anyways without those harsh edges. It just sort of softens up the look a little bit. And you can see there's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting the colors. I'm putting a light one right next to the darkest blue there. But then I'm going to go in with some other colors and just blend it out so that each section is kind of two different colors. I like how this technique gives you some light spots and some dark spots and really gives the look of water. After I get that last layer done using a stencil, I'm just going to remove the stencil and continue to ink the rest of this panel with the ink all the way to the edges. Now I'm going to add some splatters. So I've got some blueprint sketch that I've just smushed onto my craft mat, adding water again, just like I did on the sand on the bottom. And I'm picking it up and splattering it. I'm using my block there to get some tiny little splatters if you just flick it off the side. And then I'm going to use my heat tool to make sure that's dry. I also decided to add some blueprint sketch oxide ink because it has a slightly different color when you do this. It gets that chalky finish. And then once I have all those where I want them and looking like I want, I'm going to remove that stencil that I was using as a mask on the bottom and I'm going to add some white flecks. And I just removed that stencil because I want those white flecks on the water as well as the sand on the bottom. So now that that's all dry, I'm going to take my outside in largest rectangle and I'm going to run that through my die cut machine. So now it has a nice clean stitched edge that I can add this panel to a black card base and it gives it that nice black frame. So I'm going to use the little sentiment stamp in this set that just says smile. I've cut a little banner from some black cardstock and I'm just going to white emboss this. So I'm adding some anti-static. 
I'm going to stamp it with some clear embossing ink and then I'm going to add some white embossing powder. I've stamped that to the left side of this banner because it's going to overhang off the side of the card and then I'm going to trim it to the length that I want. And then I'm just going to use my heat tool to melt that embossing powder for a nice bright white sentiment. Now I can start adding all my ocean shelfy critters that I've colored out and cut with the coordinating dies. And I just love this camera. This could be used with other sets too, I think. But this camera is just super cute to add to these little guys. I'm guessing it's an underwater safe camera, obviously. I'm going to add the seedweed with some liquid glue. I've popped everything else up on foam squares. And then you can see I cut that one in half so that it looks shorter. And I'm going to hide it behind this rock here. So it gives you a little more variation if you cut up your stamps a little bit like that. After I get all these little guys added, then I can add my sentiment banner. I'm going to pop it up on some foam squares as well. And I'm going to let that overhang the side of my card. And then I'll just take my scissors and snip off that excess. So to finish this off, I'm adding some glossy accents, just some little dots of that to look like bubbles on this fun background. So since they're clear, they're not going to take away from that background, but they're going to add a little bit of shine and look like bubbles once they dry. And then here is that finished card. Thanks so much for letting me remake your card today, Audrey. So for the next card that I'm going to create, I'm going to do a inked background again with those ocean wave stencils. But for this one, I'm going to keep it simple and keep one ink color. So this actually gives it a slightly different look. As you can see here, you can still see those waves just like you can when you change up the colors. But it's a little more solid and kind of has a tone on tone look because you're getting different variations in the intensity of the ink even though you're using the same color. I am going to add another color to this background that you'll see in just a minute, but you can see how you can get a really cool look just using the one color of ink. So the next thing I'm going to do is use those exact same waves in the exact same place, like a mask, but then what I did was I actually lined it up and then I shifted it slightly so it's not exactly lined up. And what this is going to do is create some lines. So I'm using some Peacock Feathers ink and I'm just going to lightly ink the upper side where that stencil is. You can't see too much of a difference yet, but when I pull this stencil up, you'll see that it kind of makes this fat border of the line of the wave. And I'm not adding a lot of ink, just a little bit, just to kind of get that line there. So you can see when I pull this away, you kind of have that wavy line that looks like a big fat line, like a ribbon or something you drew with a chisel tip marker, which is just kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to all the waves. And I'm just using the ones that I used before and lining up their shapes and shifting it, holding it in place with some tape, and just adding a little bit of that Peacock Feathers ink. So this just gives it kind of a different look. I am making sure that I wipe off my stencil so I don't transfer that ink to the parts that I don't want it to be. I want to keep that line nice and bright. And I think what also makes it stand out is that the top of that line there, that was where I had less ink when I inked it the first time. So that's the lightest of the colors. So they kind of stand out now. Makes it give a cool stripe look to the background. Now I'm going to add some specks of white metallic watercolor. 
So I'm just gonna pick that up with my paintbrush and tap that paintbrush and add those splatters to the background. I really love adding splatters to these ocean scenes because I just think it really helps it look like water with stuff kind of floating in the water. And then I'm actually gonna add a little bit of that gold as well because I thought that really bright yellow gold went well with those bright green colors that I have. And then finally to finish off this background panel, I'm gonna go in with some Lucky Clover and just sort of darken up the edges. I really think this defines the edges and kind of frames this panel. And it really gives it that sort of ocean look with the light source sort of, sort of in the middle. And you know, like in the ocean, it kind of fades off into darkness. So I just think that this really frames it up nicely and makes it look nice and finished. So now that that's done, I'm just going to add this whole panel to a card base. So I'm going to cut some craft cardstock with a stitched hillside border die. And I'm also going to cut this Polaroid frame from that same craft cardstock. This card's going to have these ocean critters taking a selfie in that picture frame. I'm adding some tea dye distressing to the edge of this craft cardstock to kind of darken it up. And I'm also going to add some vintage photo as well. And then I'm going to go and do the same to the Polaroid. And I just thought this kind of was a cool look. Instead of a bright white Polaroid frame, you know, this picture is taken in the ocean. So maybe their Polaroid frames are different, like made out of old sunken ship wood or something. <laughs> but that's kind of the idea I was going for with this. So I'm taking that tea dye distress ink and the vintage photo as well and I'm just going to darken it up, make it look like it's kind of old and been in the ocean for a little while. I'm going to go ahead and glue the sand that's on the bottom to the bottom of the panel that I created earlier. And then I'm going to add some little dots with my Copic marker just to make it look a little more like sand. So adding lots of texture to this card. Now for my Polaroid here, I've cut a piece of vellum. And the reason why I'm using vellum to kind of back this is I want to see that background that I made through the vellum. So this way I get to use that background as the background for my card base as well as the picture that's going to be in my frame. But it gives it a slightly different look because we're looking through the vellum. I'm stamping the sentiment, I love you this much. That's from this stamp set. And so you can see that the critters on the left are taking the selfie and then the critters that are facing forward are the ones that are gonna be in the picture after they've had their selfie taken. So that's kind of the idea behind this set, which is why you have two octopi, two fish, two jellyfish, and two of the clams. So I'm gonna be putting these guys in my frame and you could layer these behind, but I wanted to keep it nice and thin and make sure that vellum didn't have to go over pieces of cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim these guys off. I'm using the piece that came out of the middle of the Polaroid as my guide on where to trim them. So I'm just holding him where I want him. I'm just going to cut along the edge and then he's going to fit right down into the corner once I get it trimmed the way I want it. Like I said, you can also layer these behind the frame and just glue the frame over top of them. So I'm just going to mark this little clam where I want to cut him. I'm going to trim him off. And so they both look like they're going off the side of the frame. So now I can add that frame to my background. I'm just putting glue where the frame is. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue behind my critters. I'm just making sure I avoid the parts that are just the vellum. So you want to hide the glue behind all these pieces that are on the front. And then I'm just going to glue that to my background. And you can see there with the vellum, I've basically used the background I created for both the picture and the card base. So now to add the little guys at the bottom, you can see I put the camera in the octopus's hand because he's taking the selfie, which he's got eight legs, so he's the best one to do this, right? And then I'm going to add the little clam 
the little fish and the little jellyfish. And you can see that I colored them all the same so that you get the story of the critters at the bottom taking their selfie and then what's in the picture was the end result. And then to finish it off, I'm just adding some clear iridescent sequins just to act as bubbles because I just love the bubbles in the ocean. But it just adds a little more element around. And then here is that finished card. Now let's take a look at some other cards made by the design team. Elise made this fun Polaroid card and I love how she attached the Polaroids with tape. Tammy's card is super cute with an inked background and I love all those cameras that the octopus is holding. Elena's card combines some fish from Mermaid for You to create a fun underwater scene. And Megan's card is super colorful and bright and I love that scripty sentiment that she added to the scene. I love Letitia's slimline card with all those cute critters and her inked background that combines the cloudy stencil with the new ocean wave stencil. Elise made a masked oval to frame up her little scene using that octopus and jellyfish, which is super cute. And then Grace used the new Polaroid frame that comes with the Magic Iris camera pull tab add-on to create a fun, tall, slimline card. And then here's Audrey's card that inspired the card that I created today. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.